We have a room. Looks like there's an auto ottoman and a table and an armoire in it. Over at a 45 degree angle, I see a chair and a desk or a table next to it with a little lamp on it. I see at the end of this room a fireplace and a carpet here in the middle. I also see some arrows down here at the bottom. So you may notice that here there's an arrow and here. This is where you would stand for a one point view. So I would like you to draw this room as if you're standing here and you're looking into the room this way. The picture plane, if you're standing here, is going to be flat this way. So you're flat to this back wall in every line that goes across this direction then in the drawing, so this edge of the carpet, this edge of the ottoman, this edge of the fireplace, this edge of the carpet, this edge of the armoire and the table, will all be drawn horizontally because that's your width. All the lines that go this direction in the drawing are depth. So the edge of the fireplace, the front end of the armoire, the edges of the carpet, the ends of the table would all be drawn towards vanishing point. Your height is not included in this drawing. It's 10 feet from here to here. It's 10 feet from here to here. And I want to add the height dimension, which would be extruding up from each of these corners, 10 feet up into the room this way, right? So this back wall runs in width and height. So I need to make a 10 by 10 foot elevation of that wall back here in my drawing. I'm going to do it in the top third because I want room out here to draw furniture. So maybe you want to like divide your paper in half or just get a sense of where that's going to be. And let's draw the bottom of the wall here at about halfway down the page. And let's draw the top of the wall, maybe a little bit from the top. There's not much going on in the ceiling, so we're not going to worry about that. But if this is my height, then put your pencil here and pinch it and say the width is going to be the same. Drawing very lightly with my hard pencils at the beginning of a drawing. Let's on the left hand side of this square make a ruler. Write 10 at the top corner and write zero at the bottom. And then go halfway up and put a five. Well, I'm already ready to draw a horizon line. Horizon lines I know go up five feet. So I'm gonna go straight horizontally across the paper looking at the top to try and get that nice and horizontal. Let's put our vanishing point right in the middle. Let's make this easy since there's a new concept going on with our floor plan. Vanishing point in the middle. This time we are gonna draw an X directly through, right? Because this is gonna come out equally here and here, and here and here. Now take your pencil and guide yourself along that trajectory. Figure out where it's going to go off the edge of the paper. Give yourself a point. Put your pencil at the corner of the room, your eye at that point, and draw a line straight out to the edge. This one's going to be easier. It's just going to go up about that far. This one wants to continue in this direction. This is a longer line, so I'm going to lay my pencil down, put my thumbnail there, get myself a point, turn my paper, pencil down, eye up here, line. This is the line of the ceiling. This is the right wall. 
This is the left wall. This is the floor. This is the back wall. Let's continue the elevation back there. There's a fireplace right in the middle. So let's take this middle line right here. We'll say that's five. And this is 10 along the bottom. How wide would you say that fireplace is? What if we make it four? Could we say this is three and three? Three and three is six and four is 10. Let's say that this is four feet wide. And let's make each of these three feet. So we're gonna come here to five. What's three feet, four feet? We need to go two feet on either side, right? Well, if I go between five and 10 and I say that's seven and a half, and I go here and I say that's two and a half, and I'm gonna put just a little mark here. How do I divide five? It's a little tricky, right? But I'm gonna put a mark right and left, and I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five, put a mark right and left of my seven and a half and say that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'm gonna check my marks and if they're a little bit too far apart or a little bit too close together, then I tend to, so I just put a dot where I thought two and a half was and a dot where I thought seven and a half was. And then I put a mark on the right of the dot and the left of the dot and I called the mark on the right eight and I called the mark on the left seven. Then I went halfway between seven and five for six and I went halfway between, right? You can do this. While I'm at it, why don't I fix my ruler on the left side too? Let's go halfway between five and zero and put a dot, that's two and a half. So I'm gonna go just below it and I'm gonna put a two and I'm gonna go just above it, I'm gonna put a three and then I'm gonna go halfway between there and get a four and halfway between here and get a one. I'm gonna go halfway between five and 10, I'm gonna put a dot, I'm gonna call that seven and a half. And I'm going to put a line below it and call it seven. And I'm going to put a line above it and call it eight. And then I'm going to say this is nine and this is six. Good. All right, I've got a good setup to start my drawing. This fireplace we said is four feet wide. So here where it says seven, I'm going to start a line up. And here where it says three, I'm going to start a line up. That's going to give me three feet on this left side and three feet on the right side of it. I'm going to take that line. I'm going to do the shadow of the fireplace. So I'm going to turn my paper to the side. I'm going to draw all the way up to the top of the wall. Very lightly. Because this is just the shadow. This is not the front of the fireplace. This is where the fireplace hits the wall. I'm going to bring that fireplace out into the room a bit. Right? So if I'm gonna make a 10 foot deep room, I gotta get that going in depth too, right? So take your pencil, put the end of it at 10, pinch it at zero, and swing it out along this line here. And give yourself a 10 mark out here in the room. And then go horizontally across. Give your ten self a 10 mark over here. Now I can't start dividing this line into half just by saying half the distance from here to here. I have to X from 0 to 10. And from 10 to 10, this is my center point. So I can go horizontally there. and put a five and a five on the left and right side of my room. I can draw from this point down through this five through that point there and straight out of the room this way. And I know that this is five feet here. 
So now I have four boxes drawn on the floor, which are five feet by five feet wide. I want to X those boxes each as well. So I get a little British flag going on in there. Because halfway between five and 10, seven and a half, and halfway between five and zero is two and a half. And if you notice in this floor plan, these X's right here, this X right here in the back is this X right here. So I could say now that this carpet That's 10 and this is five. And this is two and a half to here. That carpet lays right on two and a half back there, doesn't it? So go to this X where you have two and a half and draw a horizontal line across there that's gonna be the back of your carpet. The front of your carpet is in front of this seven and a half line, isn't it? It comes further in this direction. So where I have my 7.5 line, I'm gonna come in front of that just a little bit. Is it halfway between there, here and there? Not quite. So I'm not gonna go half, but I'm gonna make another horizontal line out here. It's gonna be the front of my carpet. And we said that all the lines that go this direction are gonna to head towards vanishing point. So notice how this inside line of the carpet is kind of close to that X right there and this X right here. If I go from this X here to that X there, they should be heading towards my vanishing point. And the opposite is true. If I go to this X here and this X here, they should be headed towards my vanishing point out there. So now I have a square on my floor that's related to this carpet. It's not exactly right because this line back here is this back line and this is the inside line. So it's got to come a little wider on the right and the left away from those. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to draw a line here and here. That's going to be the outside edge of the carpet, and this is going to be the inside edge of the carpet. Looks like it changes color there, right? This carpet was drawn as if it does some sort of a transition in there. I want to come out here and draw the front of my carpet in here. And this back of the carpet I said was the, the very end of the carpet, so I'm going to come forward on that to draw a little line back here. And I'm gonna make this line back in the back narrower than this line I made up in the front because things get smaller as they move off in the distance. So I want a very small line back here. And that, my friends, will set your carpet up. That's a good thing to do because things relate in here to the carpet. Things relate to these X's. We're getting ourselves a really good footprint in this room so that we can understand where things lie. All right, so this carpet here, this X up in front here is this point right here. And this point over here is this point right here, okay? Getting a sense of how this all maps out.